Okay, good morning everybody. It's a show. Welcome. I am excited to be here with you this morning. Um, as you're hopping on, please uh, say who you are, where you're from, what it's like there this morning. Um, we just got snow on the first day of spring, so that's always good. <laughs> Um, I don't mind too much because I am a winter lover. I love skating and skiing, and if you follow me on Instagram, you see all that stuff, and ice climbing. So yes, uh, we're going to get right into it shortly, and I'm excited to talk to you about three hot tips for juggling multiple side hustles while still having a life it's not all about our businesses even though our businesses are important and even though we love them so this is something that a couple of women in the group uh, asked me about I also regularly get emails from people on my newsletter list and they say and also my clients I, I hear a lot how the heck do you do all the things that you do so some of you may know that I became a single mom back in the fall, so I have one daughter, she's in grade one, so I juggle that, parenting her, I it's, it's not 50-50, I am the main parent, um, I'd say 80% of the time or more, so um, there's that, uh, and then I also have two blogs, uh, and I am a business coach, so I have a bunch of wonderful clients that I see every month and how is it possible to do all this and still be relaxed <laughs> still be able to sleep at night still be able to shut my mind off all that kind of stuff so um, also once you hop on if you can let me know just to double check that you can hear me I'm sure that it's working fine um, but just you know Facebook to know for sure so yes so my two sites are very different so one of them is a food blog and the other one is a personal finance site for women good morning Karen oh my gosh I can see the comments right there now this is new <laughs> I haven't been done alive in a while so awesome um, it looks like I can write in too so that's fantastic oh my gosh this is a much better dashboard than there used to be so great. Um, how, how is your morning going, Karen? Uh, yeah, so some people, first of all, I'm going to talk about the traditional view, right? What is the traditional view of work or having a business? It's you have one job for decades and you grow it and you grow up the ranks, you make more money and then you retire. Well, you know what? This dominant view has gone into the business self-employment world as well and it's something that I'm not a huge fan of and I'm a bit different than a lot of other coaches in that way so hey Bethany good morning um, so something that I really believe is you can have a wonderful business and life doing multiple things so it's not all about always niching down picking that one thing and doing that forever even if that's your own business so it works for some people but I am what's called a multi potentialite uh, or multi passionate and so are that's generally the clients that I work with so sometimes I'm like not a super big fan of the word multi potentialite because it can sound like kind of conceited like wow I can do so many things you know look at me go you know like um, and I sometimes I prefer the word multi-passionate because what it means is you have a lot of diverse areas that you're interested in and there's still a way to make a great living with this so it's not always about niching down focusing on one aspect and just growing that to like unlimited income you know this is what I hear from a lot of other coaches and that might work for some people but not everybody and you have to really respect the type of person that you are. If you're not the type of person to have one job for 30 years or more, um, then why would you necessarily want to just have one thing that you're doing? 
So for me, my websites are really different. I don't have two food blogs. I don't just work with food bloggers. I have a personal finance site and I have a food food site. Um, and then I work with people that have MLMs. I work with people that sell digital products. I work with other people with blogs. These are my clients. So it's, it's diverse. So how the heck do I do this? <laughs> and how do I make time for my daughter who is my absolute priority, absolute priority. So I just wanna say good morning, Kristen, and good morning, Sanjana. It's nice to see you guys here. Thanks for joining. Let me know how your morning's going. Also, let me know what your businesses are. I'd love to hear, like, what are your side hustles? You can drop that in the comments as well. So my number one first tip, my first hot tip for juggling all that I do and um, what I recommend for my clients as well is set up passive income. Set up passive income, so important. If you are constantly having to hustle, having to work for each sale that you make, that is going to be a recipe for burnout. It's not sustainable, it's not sustainable. And it might be okay for the level that you're at, but if you do want to increase your income, you're going to have to set up passive income streams. So what this looks like, I was camping over the summer and we were out in the Rocky Mountains and I woke up in the tent and I was ready to make like, you know, campfire oatmeal. <laughs> and I looked on my phone and I had a notification that I just made $150. And that was from a passive income stream that I set up. I did nothing, it had nothing to do with coaching. I was not reaching out to anybody. I was not doing sales calls. I was not promoting. Uh, it was a funnel that I set up two years prior that still regularly brings me an income while I'm doing nothing and not promoting it. I don't promote it very often in emails or anything like that. It was fully, fully passive. So this is something that's that you can do no matter what. So you don't have to have a blog for this. You can have um, you can be on you know, Instagram, Facebook, have your own Facebook group, TikTok, whatever your main channel is, um, that's where you're going to need to be setting up a funnel. So funnels are not just um, for, for blogs or anything like that. All it is, like in a funnel, again, like these terms sometimes are like, oh, um, but all it is is the idea of getting someone familiar with you and a product or service something that can help them solve a problem or better their life in some way. So people are constantly looking for solutions. So it's your job to connect your solution with the correct people. And so that's where the funnel comes in. Um, another example is uh, last week, I, or a few days ago, I was out skating with my daughter and um, the boy that she has a crush on in her class, she cannot stop talking about him. It's like she didn't notice boys until two weeks ago and all of a sudden it's like I I love him and he's so funny and like she's named all her stuffed animals after this boy and like yeah massive like grade one crush it's really cute um, but anyway we were skating together and I again at the end of the skate I checked my phone and I had made a couple of sales of a completely different product that I had another funnel set up for so it's just a really doable way of getting passive income. So passive income, again, like is not all about doing nothing and just like getting paid. That's scammy and that's not what I'm talking about. It's doing the work, putting in the work up front for no money, putting, putting in the work up front for no money, but doing it properly so that you grow the passive income and you start to get those sales. So when you're first setting it up, it's kind of like, it might feel futile at first because it's not, it doesn't feel as like immediately proactive as going and like, you know, jumping on a sales call, sending someone a message in a DM. But the problem with those things is long-term, they take a lot of effort. Again, like it should, should be part of your strategy as well. Like there's the active and the passive components, but for long-term, bringing in money without putting out so much effort um, and freeing up your time 
you need to start getting those passive income streams. So I created, um, it's a mini, a mini course, and I'm just gonna find it here and drop the link. I don't know if I just disappeared on you, I'll be back. Um, I'm just gonna drop it in the comments here. So I created a really affordable, quick action course for you to set up your own um, funnels. So it's just $9. It's three video lessons, they're quick, um, and then there's also a, a long, longer ebook. So you can look into everything and kind of delve into it more. Um, and it's also got work, worksheets in there for you to work through everything on your own. So I would highly encourage you to take a look at it if you have not set up your own funnels yet, because it will help you walk through those and passive income is the way to go. You know, it's the way to go long term and it's how I can have good months. Um, being a single mom, being, you know, the, the main person who takes care of my daughter, um, she has some, some higher needs as well. Uh, and also, you know, running multiple things and still being able to be there for my coaching clients in a, in a very big way because I don't run groups. I, I do all private coaching because that's what I like. <laughs> I like the one-on-one -on -one connections. Okay, so number two is schedule schedule time in for fun. So maybe this sounds counterintuitive for how to juggle your side hustles, but it's a really important tip because if you don't schedule time in for fun, you're going to burn out, especially when you are juggling all the things. So, you know, do you have like kids? Like let me know how many kids you have. You can drop that in the comments and if you're watching this later type hashtag replay so i can say hi to you as well um i what are you juggling like what what does your life look like we're all we're all busy whether or not you have multiple side hustles you have other things going on in your life you might be taking care of elderly parents grandparents you know like there's so many things going on so if we don't schedule time for fun whatever that is we're going to burn out so I know something about this, like years ago, I um, was asked to step into this role as executive director for this organization. Um, and it was just a mess, the organization was a mess. So I wanted to fix it. And so um, I spent so many, like so many hours of every day working until midnight, day after day after day. Um, week after week to try and fix it. And I like did an awesome job on that, but it took a toll on my physical and mental health. So I was starting to experience burnout massively. So I really had to take a step back. And now with, with my business businesses now, I am very conscious of my, I, I love my agenda. It's just a basic, boring looking agenda and paper because I, I need to have things um, down in that way. That just helps me seeing it all there. So I will schedule it in, like on the weekend, um, going ice climbing, because that's one of the things I love to do. It's probably one of the last weeks. So I will schedule that in so that I know that's my block of time. I'm going ice climbing. I am not, I'm not working during that time. So it's important to build this into every single week. So build it into your week and don't leave it up to chance, because if you're like, yeah, yeah, like once I get this done and once I get that done, I'm going to, you know, go for a coffee with a friend, or I'm going to go get an ice cream, or whatever it is. Um, but it's so easy to not do those things. It's so easy to keep working on your business, and I find this especially because I love my businesses so much, like love them. So it's not a chore for me to work on my businesses. It just feels like easeful and fun and fulfilling. So I could keep wanting to put in more and more hours. So that's why it's important, even if, and especially if you love your businesses, and you love your side hustles, you love what you do, it's important to put that time in that is not working on your business. So let me know what you like to do for fun. And also, do you schedule that in? Or do you kind of leave it up to chance? Because it's dangerous if you, if you leave it up to chance because it just it's one of the first things to get bumped out. It just is, you know, is your family get, gonna get bumped out? No, likely not. 
is your business going to get bumped out? No. So it's, it's the fun things or the self-care things that we do for ourselves that are likely to get, be the first to get bumped off of our list if our list is just in our head and not, you know, not um, a commitment that we make to ourselves. So the last uh, tip thing that I do um, to balance everything that I do and uh, my multiple sites, uh, just a, a quick aside of, of that, I, I've been very tempted lately to start a third website. Uh, some of you guys have been following this a little bit in the group that close to buying a third um, domain name. But the problem is it's a time thing, right? Like I only have so much time and energy that I could spend writing new blog posts. I already have two sites that I need to keep going. They are both monetized. They're both making money every month. I get checks every month from both of them. So I those have to be my focus, right, for now. And maybe when my daughter is a bit older, I'm going to revisit this and add in a third. But I'm, so far, I'm holding off buying it, so it's, it's so tempting because I know I could do a good job with it. I have a lot of ideas, but it's one of those things where you, you have to say no, even if, even if it's to something that you like. So the last, my last tip is to drop the busy work. There are so many tasks that we can do in our businesses every day, but some of them make money or lead to making money, whereas others are maybe easier to work on, maybe they're more fun for us to work on, maybe they don't take us out of our comfort zone, they're comfortable and familiar and it's something we enjoy working on. If they are not directly leading to something that will make money, you have to minimize those. It's just a way to save time, to be more efficient. Um, Sometimes I find that the more I have on my plate, the more things, the more balls that are up in the air, the more efficient I am. So for example, on the days where my daughter goes to um, her dad's place for dinner, so that's like a three or four hour block and then she comes back. I am so efficient <laughs> in those three to four hours. I get just a ton of stuff done because I know the start time, I know the end time, the house is quiet. Um, I, you know, either I work on my business during that time or, you know, I do like certain cleaning things that are harder to do when she's around because she will unclean <laughs> while I'm cleaning. Um, so really take away the busy work. So in those moments, I, I pick what are the important things for me to work on. Okay, one thing is I need to set up this funnel for a product that I've created that I have no funnel to. So if you have a product that you have no funnel to, then that's that's a key thing right now. Like write that down. That's that's something you should be working on this week. That is not busy work. That is figuring out eventually how to get the passive income to that product. So it's not like constantly launching, constantly having to put yourself out there in lives or putting it out there in, in your email. Um, actively each time. So it's setting up email funnels or um, setting up a flow in your Facebook group so that people can watch a video and then learn more about what you do, what you offer. So it's setting up those things um, so that the passive income, income can come in. So take a look at the, the money-making activities in your own business. They're going to be different for each of our businesses. I've given you some examples. And focus on the ones that make money. And this is the key here, even if they are harder for you. Focus on the things that will make money, even if they're harder for you. So that's the hard part for a lot of people. I find that's hard for myself, that's hard for my clients because we want to work on the things that feel easeful, right? Like you, we wake up, we want to work on something that feels like an easy win. But is it an easy win if it is not leading towards something that will make money in our business? Because ultimately these are not hobbies. These are not hobbies. These are businesses to make money, to bring in income. So what can you do today? What can you do this week that is not busy work? So for you, it might be really challenging to 
write to someone in a DM, and I don't mean like cold DMing, like ick. Um, I mean somebody who has expressed interest in what you offer. Are you procrastinating reaching out to them because you don't know what to say? Well, that is potentially your money-making activity. That is not busy work. That's something you should be focusing on. So maybe drop the, the working on, you know, like pretty, pretty graphics for your, your header or an Instagram, you know, Instagram frames that are, you know, like take a lot of time and are really like labor intensive, but don't really lead to anything. Unless of course you do graphics and that's your business. So again, you have to tailor this to what your business is, and what you're offering. Um, but focus on the things that bring in money, even if they are harder. So that could be things also like going live, like making an offer, um, setting up a funnel. Some of these things could be things that you just put on the back burner. But when you are trying to juggle multiple things going on in your life, then you really need to drop the busy work. Even if the busy work is easier, even if the busy work is more fun. And if it's things that you still need to do, pick the harder money-making activity. It's not always harder, but just pick the money-making activity. Do that first and then reward yourself with the easier task. So you're still working on your business, but you've gotten that harder for you task out of the way. So whether that's you know scheduling your live, um, setting up a, a, a sales offer email, uh, if, if you're, you know, you're just feeling like you have writer's block, you just don't want to work on that, I'd encourage you to, to try to work through that, to do it anyways, drop, drop the busy work, focus on the money-making tasks. Okay, um, so if you've got any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. Uh, I do a heck of a lot, so <laughs> this this live is like right up my alley. Um, and it's one of those things where I'm so used to being this way that I almost, you know, it, it, I'm glad a lot of people brought it forward to me like, hey, how do you do this? Like do a live on this because sometimes you, you do these things that are so intuitive to you that you don't realize that not everybody is doing them and that it could be helpful. So. Thank you for bringing this forward to me. It was a great topic for a live and I, I enjoy talking about this because um, Again, this is one of my core personality traits. It's one of my core values in terms of bringing forth multiple gifts that you have to the world so You don't you can make a great income. You can look at um, my I uh, took a screenshot and shared it yesterday of so for my March income, um, as of three weeks in, you can make a great income not niching down. But you have to be focused. You have to sometimes make yourself do the hard tasks. You have to look at the money-making things um, and set up passive income streams. So um, I'm also, so take a look in the comments if you want to take a look at my sales funnel course. It's a mini course, quick action. You can do it in an afternoon, which is amazing um, because I, I just don't want you to be like spending so much time on these things and just like learning and learning and learning and not implementing. Like this is like you learn it and you do it, put it out there, get your funnel going. You know, it's, it's important and it, it's so rewarding when you make that first sale when you're, you know, out like in Sephora <laughs> trying on new perfumes or whatever, like, and you, you look and you're like, oh my gosh, I just made some sales. So that's awesome. Um, it's going to be a really good feeling. So it's very much worth it. Um, and the other thing I'm going to share is an invite to my uh, unlimited laser coaching. So it's a really, really fun way to work with me um, and a really quick way to get results as well. So what it is, is it's a year long opportunity to work with me um, and to get my <laughs> my brain and my ideas and my experience over the last 15 years um, in in business on yours um, so it has to do with uh, very focused coaching so sometimes coaching 
you know, you're, you're talking with someone for an hour, two hours, whatever it is. Laser coaching is different. So we have quick 15 minute sessions. It's unlimited, which means you can have as many as you want in a year. Um, and it's a crazy affordable price. So it is, it is the most inexpensive way to work with me. Um, and to get me for the whole year, it, it's going to move the needle in your business massively. Like it's, I'm just gonna get the link here. I don't know if I disappeared again. I'm gonna drop it there. So you can go and take a look at that page. Um, you can also ask me some questions about it if you want more information. Karen, amazing. So you made, that's awesome. That's so, so good. So good. Was that part of your spring promo? Was that part of your spring promo? I am curious. I know you did well with, with um, offering that good sale. Oh, it wasn't. Oh my goodness. Look at you. <laughs> That's exciting. Um, tell me what the, what the products were. I'm curious. Um, yeah, so you guys have a wonderful day. And I hope you implement some of these tips. They really make it doable to have a thriving business that makes a great income without burning out. And that's what I want for you guys too. So thanks for watching. Thanks for being with me this morning. Talk to you soon.